Hey guys, so today I'm out on the VFR, a little old Vicky today. I'm just going to kind of do like a little bit of a ride review. I haven't done one yet. And I know I've been asked a few times like, hey, why don't you uh, tell us more about the bike? How is it to ride it? So that's what this video is going to be. And I must say, guys, I am pretty impressed with the handling of this bike. Like I knew this bike would be a comfortable commuter bike. And so far it's done that great. I've been on the highway many times with it. The way this bike tackles the twisties is pretty damn impressive. I mean, I keep I have to remind myself that this is a 530 pound bike because of course it's not as flickable as my CBR, but damn, she just holds the line great. You know what I think it is too? And I think that although this bike might not be as capable as my CBR in the corners, this bike's actually pretty damn confidence inspiring because the way these handlebars are is they're a lot taller than my CBRs are. So you get a lot more leverage for the corners. And also with more body weight, when you're in the corner, it feels more planted. The lighter you are, like the more squirrely everything feels, but the more planted you are, well, the more planted you feel. A gear indicator would be nice for this bike, but not really needed. You just go by what you feel. This is a tough corner right here. I took that doing 40. So, I mean, I can take the corners going about the same speed as I do with my CBR. I'm just impressed. I might be, I wonder what tires these are. Like, God damn, I'm getting pretty damn low. And this V4 engine, it just tempts you to go. You know, it's funny, you hear about this bike and all people could say is 530 pounds, 530 pounds. But unless you've ridden this bike, it's really hard to comment about it. That 530 pounds is actually pretty damn manageable. God damn. This is a pretty low corner. Holy shit, I got down pretty goddamn low there. <laughs> Let's see what I just did there. <laughs> got a little bit of tire squealage. Oh, that wasn't very long. It felt like a lot longer than that. God, this is fun. The VFR, man. Who would have thunk, man, like out of all the bikes in the world, a goddamn VFR handles the twisties this well. Um, this will be my last run and then we will talk about some other things. Wow, wow, my foot just touched the ground. And like I said earlier guys back in the day when this bike first came out in the early 90s They had this bike competing against the purpose-built sport bikes like 600 cc You know like the hurricane and the early blades and stuff and this thing competed with them. It actually held its own. I Mean what does that tell you the fact that this was built as a commuter bike not the prettiest looking bike and that's not the this isn't a default color scheme for this bike they changed it uh the previous owner i think this bike was down and no i'm all set <laughs> so i think this bike was down and the previous owner changed up the colors and everything like changed the graphics and whatnot uh, we do have a yoshi exhaust which <laughs> I mean, sounds pretty good. You got dual caliper brakes. You got one, I think there's two pistons inside these calipers. Um, you, but you got the dual brakes in the front and you got the one in the back. We do have our beautiful single-sided swing arm, which my tire is dirty, I know. I gotta wash this whole bike. Um, and actually she's getting hot, so I'm gonna have to leave in a second here. But there's the back right there. All right, let's, let's get her moving. She doesn't like sitting still. 
are the gear driven cams. Uh, one thing that does suck about this bike, one thing, one area that it really is lacking, and I don't know if it's because my bike's old or whatever, but the brakes suck. The brakes are absolutely terrible. Like, you really have to hammer them for them to lock up on you a lot. If you could only have one motorcycle and you wanted to do a lot of touring, you wanted to commute, but you also wanted to have fun in the twisties on the weekends, I'm telling you guys, this is a fantastic bike for that. It just does so many things well. And it doesn't really do anything bad. The fuel delivery, the power delivery, everything is just spot on. There's no lag, you hit the gas, you go. It has torque. This bike has so much torque. It has about, what, 55 foot-pound or something like that. It makes about 100 horsepower. I mean, this bike is just a great bike. Honda, you did your homework with this bike. You did a fucking great job. Honda builds some amazing machines, and this is no exception. The handlebars are probably a little bit too low to be a really great, amazing cruising bike. And also, the windshield should probably be a little bit taller. These bikes, you can pick up yourself a VFR 750, uh, 90 or above, don't get anything lower than that, they were unreliable, and 90 they became reliable. Uh, you can pick yourself up one of these bikes for, I believe, like 1500 bucks. Even, I've seen them as cheap as 600 bucks, seriously. Like I said, if you wanted a touring bike, like officially, a bigger windshield would be nice. I have some aftermarket grips on, some AME grips. The mirrors are great, the mirrors seriously are. Compared to my CBRs, the mirrors are just fantastic. They're the best mirrors I've ever used. Uh, the cockpit over here, I like how you got the RPM gauge right in the front. You got the speedometer over the left. The fuel gauge is there, you got a temperature gauge. You got an oil light, neutral light, high beam light, and side stand light. You got a, and then the turn signal lights. You got a low fuel indicator right there as well. You got a tripometer uh, also, and an odometer of course. Low beam, high beam right here, choke lever on the side. You can turn the engine off right there, start button here. You got yourself a nice hydraulic clutch. Nice and uh, easy to pull in. One finger's all you need to pull it in. It's pretty light. Some problems with this bike, uh, the rectifiers go on them, so you definitely got to replace those. Make sure it's not OEM, get an aftermarket one, they'll last a lot longer. I already checked this one, uh, the previous owner already took care of that. There isn't already an aftermarket regulator, because I guess the original ones, they didn't have the fins, so they couldn't disperse heat, they overheated and turned off. Uh, this, the one I have has hit fins on it, and I looked at the part number and it wasn't the OEM one for this, so I was pretty happy about that. That's one thing I don't have to worry about, but if you do buy one, definitely check to make sure you do not have the original rectifier. You're going to have a very difficult time finding a bike that's similar to this one for the same price. I mean, for about a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars, maybe two grand for a clean, um, a clean example, you'll get yourself a v4 gear driven touring sport bike that can go in the twisties is comfortable is pretty decent looking in my opinion and cheap it, it's just and it's super reliable i mean there's people who have hundred thousand miles with this bike I, i've used this bike in all sorts of different scenarios city tra um city highway twisties and it just it performs on all of them Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care, and bye-bye.